Perhaps one of the most important and famous reactions that deals with conjugated dienes was discovered in 1928 by Otto Diels and his student Kurt Alder, and this reaction became known as the Diels Alder reaction. So it's basically a reaction between two types of molecules, our 1,3-diene and our simple alkene, which is also known as the dianophile. So our dianophile is basically an alkene, this is a diene. Now the reaction takes place, as we'll see in just a moment, via a specific type of mechanism. So basically they react to form the following product, our cyclohexene. So in this lecture we're going to introduce this reaction and discuss the basics of it. So let's begin with our reaction mechanism. So in this lecture we'll just focus on the basics of the mechanism. In the next lecture we'll actually explain why this mechanism takes place. So the reaction as shown in the following diagram basically takes place in the following format. So we have our simple alkene, our dianophile, that takes its pi bond and forms a single sigma bond between this carbon and this carbon. Now that pushes these two electrons onto this bond forming a, pond bo a pi bond here and then that displaces this pi bond which forms our single bond here. And this takes place in a one step concerted mechanism. So basically that means the bonds broken and the bonds formed all take place at the same exact moment in time. So the reaction mechanism is a one-step concerted mechanism in which the bond formation and breaking occurs at the same exact time. Now the dianophile initiates the reaction by using its pi bond, the two electrons in the pi bond, to basically interact with this carbon here to form our sigma bond, while the other pi bonds are rearranged to form a pi bond and a sigma bond. So this bond is formed, this bond is formed, and this bond is formed while these three pi bonds are broken. Now to help us visualize what actually takes place, let's look at the orbital diagram of our reaction. So before the reaction takes place, we have the simple alkene that has our two lobes, the two p orbitals that interact to form the pi bond. And we have our 1,3 diene, the conjugated system between these four 2p orbitals between the four carbons. So basically, as this approaches this molecule, these upper green lobes of our dianophile, the simple alkene, overlap and interact with our lower green sections of this molecule in the following way. So these green or these red dashed lines basically designate the formation of our two sigma single bonds and our electron density basically shifts. So this electron density shifts here, this electron density shifts here, and this electron density shifts here to form this cyclohexene product. So once again, as the diene and the dianophile approach one another, their lobes approach along the same exact plane. So notice that these lobes lie along this plane and these lobes also lie along the same plane so that the overlap is perfect. Now when this overlap takes place, it shifts the electron density around in such a way to form a pi bond here and the electron density which was initially here and here end up being here and that forms our two single sigma bonds. So in the next lecture we're going to look at much greater detail on why this type of mechanism takes place as compared to a two-step mechanism. So we'll see why a two-step mechanism does not take place while this step does take place. So 
Now let's discuss the thermodynamics of our reaction. Let's compare the stability of our product to the stability of our reactant. So we can estimate the energy difference between the products, the cyclohexene and the two reactants by discussing the bonds that are uh, formed and the bonds that are broken. So which bonds are formed and which bonds are broken. So we have one, two, three pi bonds that are broken and we have one pi bond being formed and two sigma bonds also being formed. So to estimate how much energy is either released or gained in our reaction, that is to see if it's exothermic or endothermic, we take the bonds broken and subtract from the bonds being formed. So the bonds broken is equal to the amount of energy seen or found in three pi bonds. Now one pi bond carries 66 kilocals of energy per mole, so that's 3 multiplied by 66 which is 198 kilocals of energy. Now in our formation we have one pi bond, so 66 kilocals, and two sigma bonds. Now the sigma bonds in, the, in this cyclohexene has an energy of 80 kilocals each. So 2 multiplied by 80 which is 160, we add 66 to that and then we subtract that from 198 and we get negative 28 kilocals of energy per mole. The negative means that energy is released in this process and that means because energy is released it's an exothermic reaction so the products are more stable and lower in energy than our reaction. Reactant. So this implies that our cyclohexene product is more stable than our two reactants and our reaction, the Diels Alder reaction, is in fact an exothermic reaction. Now, the last part that I'd like to discuss is why is it that in this mechanism we used one type of isomer of 1,3-diene and not the other one. So notice this is in fact our S-cis isomer. So why is it that we can't use the S-trans isomer? Well, recall that S-trans is more stable than the S-cis isomer and that means at equilibrium between the interconversion from our more dominant major reacting our S-trans to our S-cis. We see that this is the minor and this is the major. So why is it that our alkene, the dianophile, has to react specifically with our cis and not the trans? Well, the reason is if we examine this uh, overlap between our green sections of the orbitals, the green lobes, if this was a trans, then this orbital would be found somewhere here. And that's simply way too far and the overlap would not be able to take place in the case of our S-trans. 1,3-diene. Uh, so the reason that this doesn't interact in the Diels alder reaction and this interacts is because of our overlap that must take place for these two single sigma bonds to actually form. So even though this is the dominant isomer compared to this one, even though we have very little of this, it's enough to actually interact with the alkene to form our cyclohexene. In fact, by Le Chatelier's principle, we know as this is depleted, as this reacts with the alkene, Le Chatelier principle will basically tell us that in order to basically decrease the stress, in order to increase this quantity, this will shift to the right and so we will produce more of our minor S cis isomer. 
So, once again, a deals all the reaction is a reaction that takes place between a conjugated system, the 1,3-diene, and a simple alkene. In this case, we use this alkene here, which is also known as the dianophile. File means loving, and this means our two double bonds. So, this basically interacts with the 1, Dying. Now, the mechanism of this reaction is a one-step concerted mechanism, and that means not only is the step via a single step, all the bonds formed and all the bonds broken, that takes place at the same exact time. Now, the reason that we must have the cis 1,3-diene and not the trans is because this overlap between the green lobes of the orbital must actually take place to form our sigma bonds. And finally, the thermodynamics of this reaction tells us that the cyclohexene is more stable than the product. So this reaction releases energy and that means the reaction is exothermic.